Good afternoon. So, a little bit more. We have this OT term, term here in the, in the slide. Raise your hand if you have seen it anywhere, know it, what it means. Anybody? Excellent. Alexei raised his hand, actually saw the terminology yesterday, keynote of OT. So today, this presentation is about OT. What it is, let's, let's see if you can learn it from, from these slides and talks that we are having with Mikko. Before going there, I want to introduce myself. So I'm coming from Valmet, Finland Tampere, working there as a product manager for our lifecycle uh, services, including cybersecurity services. Mostly I have been, uh, late, late years, I have been focusing uh, to the industrial control system, uh, cybersecurity related trainings and certification, as you can see. But uh, what I want to share in this community, in this audience is, is that that's my picture last year summit where I was getting the prize of uh, table hockey championship. Thank you. <laughs> and based, based on yesterday main party, I still cap, I have the championship, so I'm, I'm undefeated champion of table hockey in Tapic summit. So, uh, what are the OT environments? So we are Valmet, we are DCS vendor, so we are selling distributed control system, which is DCS, industrial control system, automation technologies to different factories. These are the main sectors where we are, and these are the OT environments where we are also using Zapix. Mainly we are known from pulp and paper globally, so we are uh, building up factories who are making pulp, or we are manufacturing uh, paper machines. And we are the guys who are then uh, developing also automation control system for those, like DCS. And those are the environments that we are monitoring and giving the visibility from to the customer, IT person, or maybe, or get the alerts for, for service people to maintain and managing the different uh, alerts. Interesting is that the same DCS that we are using in the pulp and paper can be also used in critical infrastructure like energy production, waste treatment facilities, and also in the marine we, we have um, cruises where we have the same DCS environment running. But what it makes it interesting is, is, and Mikko will tell you about how we are using the topics in these environments, is, is about how we are dealing with the OT. So if this is the OT operation technologies, one way to take a look at it of, of the differences with the IT and OT, if, of course, is, is usually the security. So what's the difference in the OT and IT? So many when we are talking about information security, security overall, or cyber security, the CEA triad is usually mentioned. So confidentiality, integrity, and availability. This is usually the priority. The confidentiality is most important thing, usually in the IT side. In OT, it's the availability. So what we are trying to do we need to make sure that the control system is always available for the people who are running the processes, doing the production, sometimes energy, sometimes water treatment, for example. So in OT, the availability is the most important thing. And that is why we are using Zapix for it, monitoring the availability of the infrastructure. And this point, I will give the stage to Mikko, and he will tell more about how we are using topics. Please, Nick. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Mikko Tikkala, and I'm table hockey silver medalist. Same <laughs> that there wasn't a chance yesterday to beat Ari in the final game, but that's life. 
Okay, here is some history about Valmet DNA, which is the control system developed by Valmet. So we have been doing this quite a while, because first system was made in late 70s. And in the beginning, there was only internal system diagnostics, and there was only Valmet hardware with the Motorola chips and so on. But uh, later on, around year 2000, commercial PC devices and network devices came into picture. And then some, some group of people found out that maybe we can use some software to extend this internal system diagnostics. And then they select Nagios. But uh, after a few years of running that, then we found the need that uh, we need to have a more, more powerful and more flexible monitoring system. So we ended up to Zabbix. But uh, it's quite normal to these kind of control systems that they are being running in the plant very long times, maybe even 40 years. So it's, it's setting some limits to monitoring, because there could be really old devices with quite poor CPUs or quite small amount of memory. Um, so we cannot overload the system by monitoring. And basically, um, those old, old systems can be monitored uh, by a um, script, what I made to kind of utilize this internal system diagnostics and send it to Subix. But the, I guess the most difficult ones are the, some old switches, which might, might go really bad if they are pulled by Subix too often. So luckily, I found that situation in our lab, not in our customer. And, and here was thing how, how we started to replace the Nagios. So I started my master's thesis at 2017, and there was a couple of things what needs to be considered. Security, how the software is being updated, or how can it be scaled from system from one to two node, even to system with several hundreds of nodes. And of course, flexibility. There is lots of our internal applications, what needs to be monitored somehow. So Zapix capabilities can be extended by own scripts. And, uh, and licensing cost is one, one big thing as well, because uh, of course we are, we are selling uh, monitoring services to our customers, but we would also like to use this tool for internal diagnostics. And, now, when we are using Subix, it's, it's really, really easy. You can just copy the virtual machine and run it and use it. And yeah, Subix fits into this picture quite well. And some first customer pilots was made in 2018, and now there are a few thousands of Subix instances all over the world. And um, there's still quite a much job to do because we have delivered more than 1,500 systems during the years. Okay, and how, how we use the Subix? For example, uh, smaller sites where is maybe one or two nodes, then there can be run the agent locally and it's connected to cloud. But uh, majority of sites has on-premise Subix server running there. And, and it's uh, made from virtual machine template, which includes everything what's needed. There is some uh, applications, tools, scripts, templates modified for our system, and sample configurations. And many of our customers doesn't allow any connections to their system from outside world, so I have prepared offline upgrade kits with the uh, APT offline, so we can upgrade and patch those dark sites as well. And basically, we are, we are using SMTP from those sites, which allows the connections. 
Okay, and how, how the sub piece is going to be deployed. Many of our, our service guys are not so familiar with Linux command line, so I, I need to find a way to minimize the use of command line. So I wrote an initial config script. So that's basically everything what's need to be done from the command line. And user starts the script, answers this, couple of questions, and then, then it's ready, it's up and running, and it generates uh, agent configuration files with encryption settings to server, and then there's another script what can be used to deploy those agents to nodes which are meant to be monitored. And then auto registration is being used to start to monitor those Windows nodes. And also there's API script what can be used for mass operations to add big amount of switches, for example, by, by easy way. And here is a very, very simplified system layout, what, what, how this kind of control system can be. So in the bottom, there is field devices, motors, pumps, valves, sensors, analyzers, anything which are reading data from the process and which are affecting the process somehow. And then we need some media to read those values to process controllers. So then there could be our own I.O. cards, there could be field buses or some kind of other industrial interfaces. Uh, our process controllers are running Linux operating system, but uh, because they are performing real-time stuff there, so even it's technically possible to run agent there, we, we are not doing that because that would uh, need quite extensive testing in our lab to make sure that in any condition agent won't disturb the real, real thing what they are doing. And uh, network is uh, consists of uh, with uh, many switches, different kind of brands, and they are monitored by SNMP, uh, the control room uh, typically is uh, Windows machines, and agent is being run there quite well, with, and it's, it's, it's good there. And some DMZ network where it can be physical or virtual servers like engineering, historian database, Active Directory, security, subic servers, proxies, OPC nodes, they are typically Windows nodes and agent is being used there. And in some cases, a uh, customer might want to put this Zapix server to their office network. Well, in, in that case, there's proxy in the automation network to collect the data. And here is a couple of examples from our customers. In the left side, there is a process industry customer with only network monitoring. And in the middle, there is a power industry customer with uh, full system monitoring. And in the right most, there is a pulp and paper industry customer with full system monitoring. And, and that's a really big topics instance from our point of view. It's uh, not so big when we we'll have seen these other presentations here, but And here is some example of what kind of dashboard we can use. There is a couple of maybe which are interesting stuff. stuff uh, how many connections are through the firewall, how much traffic is going to mill interface, how many RDP users are connected to engineering server, or how many HTTPS connections are open to our historian and some maps and problem indications as well. And here, how, how we are dealing with this. So we are operating globally. 
there is a customer service centers all over the world. And basically, those uh, service centers are responsible to deliver monitoring services to customers nearby. And, and of course, I'm, I'm helping them from Tampere in case they need to help, for example, sales support or implementation or troubleshooting, anything. Yeah, and that, that's all. Now it's time for questions. Thank you.